Did you know 99% of the global drug approvals today use ECTD? If you are in the pharmaceutical industry, regulatory affairs or simply curious about how medicines get approved worldwide, you are in the right place. Ever wondered how life-saving drugs seamlessly make their way from research to patients? Well, it all starts with ECTD, the electronic common technical document. In today's video, we will walk you through A to Z guide on ECTD covering its format, structure, tools, validation and submission process. Whether you are a beginner or an industry expert, this video is packed with valuable insights about regulatory publishing. So stay tuned till the end because we will share the latest regulatory updates from USFDA, EMA and other global agencies. So let's dive in. Imagine a time when regulatory submission meant shipping truckloads of paper to health authorities. Sounds exhausting, right? Well, the pharmaceutical industry has come a long way from paper-based applications to fully digital, automated ECTD submissions. In 2000, the common technical document, CTD, revolutionized global submissions, creating the standardized format across major markets. By 2003, the ECTD was born an electronic structured version of the CTD using XML to manage submissions efficiently. Today, US FDA, EMA and global agencies mandate ECTD, making it the gold standard for drug approvals. But we are not stopping here, automation, AI-driven validation and ECTD 4.0 are shaping the future of regulatory submission. So what would be next? Real-time updates, digital product labeling and smarter compliance solutions. So what is ECTD and CTD? Let's understand the basics. Before 2000, getting a drug approved was like solving a puzzle with a hundred different pieces. Each country had its own rules and formats. Then came the common technical document bringing a standard format for pharma submissions worldwide. CTD organizes regulatory documents into five key modules covering everything from regional requirements to clinical studies. But paper submissions, they are slow, expensive and hard to manage. In 2003, ECTD changed the game. They went fully digital, XML based and trackable. It made submissions faster and easier. So need to update just one section? No problem. With the incremental submissions, you don't have to resubmit everything. Regulators, they loved it too. Because of bookmarks and hyperlinks, it made the navigation very easy. And with automatic validation tools, errors are caught before they become rejections. That's why today almost every major pharma submission uses ECTD. It is efficient, transparent and simply the smarter way to get approvals. Imagine your drug application balanced on three powerful pillars that's called the CTD triangle. First, we have a quality the module 3. This is all about the chemistry manufacturing controls CMC. Regulators want answers. How is the drug made? Is it stable? Can it be produced consistently? Here is the answer in module 3. Next non-clinical which is called module 4. Before a drug reaches human it is tested on animals to check its safety, toxicity and pharmacokinetics. Every insight here matters for ensuring the drugs is safe for trials. And then there's clinical module 5. This is where all the human trial data lives from early phase 1 trials to the large scale phase 3 studies. Regulators assess this to decide if the drug is safe and effective. But why is this CTD triangle a game changer? Well, it's global standard adopted by the FDA, EMA, PMDA, Health Canada, TGA and many other global regulatory agencies. Pharma companies can now submit the same structured dosier worldwide, speeding up the approvals like never before. And with ECTD, it even gets better. Documents are linked, life cycle changes are tracked and submissions are error free. Understanding the CTD triangle is your first step into the world of global submissions. Now let's talk about CTD data structure, the backbone of pharma submissions. Submitting a messy stack of PDFs, health authority will say no thanks. With ECTD, it is all digital, organized and easy to track. At its core, ECTD uses XML backbone. Think of it as like more like a digital map. It defines the structure, tracks, updates and organizes your submission. Then there is DTD, document type definition and style sheets. DTD sets the rules making sure everything is formatted correctly. And what are style sheets? They turn the data into a clear readable format for regulators like FDA and EMA. Why does this even matter? Because ECD means faster review, fewer errors and smoother approvals. It's a smarter way of pharma companies to manage and submit applications. Now let's talk about something small but super powerful, bookmarks and hyperlinks. Imagine a regulator reviewing your submission. They need to find a clinical study in module 5. Would they rather search for thousands of pages manually or click a link and go straight to the right document? 
So definitely it is going to be click via single link. That's why regulators like FDA and EMA insist on structured bookmark and hyperlinks in ECDD submissions. So bookmarks create an easy to follow the table of contents making the navigation easy. Whereas hyperlinks, they instantly connect the related documents like linking a summary to a full study report. But be careful, broken lines or missing bookmarks can slow down the approvals or even lead to rejection. So good navigation means faster review, smoother approvals and happy regulators. Now let's talk about metadata, document naming and the sequence tracking table. First up, metadata. Think of it like an ID card for your submission. It tells the regulators what is being submitted, a new application, a variation or a response, which product it is for, sequence number, where it fits in the submission timeline. But here's the catch. Wrong metadata can lead to an instant rejection. Imagine labeling variation as a new drug application, which is a big red flag. Next comes the document naming convention. Regulators receive tons of files. If your file is called document123.pdf, how will they know what is it about? Instead, name it clearly saying that M24 Pharmatoxicology PDF, stating that it is more related to module section 2.4. Finally, sequence tracking table. Think of it's a submission log. It helps regulator to see what was submitted before, what's new and updated, how previous queries were addressed. So correct metadata, clear naming and accurate tracking. Master these and you're already on the path to smoother submissions. Let's talk about how ECTD submissions are published and how it can save you a lot of time. First, normal versus incremental publishing. Normal publishing means submitting the whole application from the start. This is usually done for new drugs or big approvals. But what if regulators ask for small change? Do you resend all 10,000 pages? No. So incremental publishing. Incremental publishing is a smarter way. You can only send the updated section, not the entire file. It is faster, it is efficient and it is lighter. Next, tracking your submission. Related sequences connect new updates to the past submissions. Regulators can see what happened before, what was approved before, what has been updated, how the new data fits in. So what is a closing sequence? Closing sequences are like case closed button. After approval, withdrawal or final questions, this marks the submission complete. So what is submission IDs? Submission IDs are submissions tracking number. Without it, regulators might not be finding your files. So the final key takeaways are use incremental publishing. It's faster and easier. Link the related sequence which keeps the history clear and double check your submission ID. No ID, no tracking. Now let's talk about a very important part of ECTD, regional requirements and document life cycle. First up, why is ECTD different for different regions? You might think ECTD is a single format used worldwide, but each regulatory agency has its own requirements. For example, USFDA wants specific submission tracking in module 1 and requires the electronic submission gateway. Whereas EMA focuses on SPAR data, mandatory ECTD for centralized approvals and uses e-submission gateway. Whereas the PMDA Japan has strict XML folder rules and custom validation criteria. Every agency follows the same core ECTD structure but tweaks the details a little bit. So that is why regional requirements are different from most of the markets. So now let's talk about lifecycle operators, node extension and linking strategy. Think of ECTD like a living document. It changes over time. So managing it properly is essential. First, lifecycle management. There are four types of lifecycle operators, which includes new, which is an addition of a brand new document, replace operator, swaps out the old document and introduces a new one, append, which adds extra content without removing the original, and delete removes the outdated document. Next is the node extension. Sometimes the standard ECDD structure isn't enough. Node extensions allow you to add extra sections in the module 3, 4 or 5. Perfect for including additional studies or stability data. And finally, the linking strategy. Regulators expect smooth navigation. So hyperlinks help connect related documents across modules. Regulatory reviewers use interlinked PDF for quick cross-reference. A poor linking strategy can lead to validation errors or reviewer frustration. So the key takeaways are different regions have different ECTD rules, so it's always better to verify. The second takeaway is track your submissions lifecycle carefully. Third, ensure clear hyperlinks and proper table of contents for an easy review process. 
So let's talk about the most important steps in ECTD publishing, validation. Think of validation as a quality check. If your ECTD fails, regulators won't even read it. Why is validation so important? Regulators have strict rules for ECTD submission. Even a small mistakes like broken hyperlinks, missing metadata, incorrect formats can lead rejection or long delays. So how do you check for errors? Use validation tools that scan your submission for mistakes. The popular ones include Lawrence E Validator, Extedo ECTD Validator, Global Submit Validator. There are so many in markets. After validation, you'll get a report with it. Error logs, which is critical issues must be fixed. Warnings, not immediate rejection points, but best to correct and pass or fail status. If it is a pass, you're good to go for submission. If it is a fail, fix those errors first. A pro tip, never skip validation. A rejected submission could cost you weeks or even months. Did you know that when you submit a ECTD, regulators don't just open a single file like we do. No, they actually use special ECD viewing tools to check our submission from different angles. Now imagine you're an FDA or EMA reviewer. A company has sent in 20 different ECD sequence over the years. How do you keep track of what is new, what is outdated and what is already approved? That's where the ECTD viewer comes in handy. They may use three major views, cumulative view, think it as, as a full story of your submission. Every sequence from day one is visible. It's like flopping through the whole history of your application. The second view is the current view. This is the cleaned up version. It only shows the latest valid documents, no outdated files, just what's approved and up to date. The third view is the single sequence view. Want to zoom in in just one update? This view does that. See that you have submitted a labeling update in sequence 85. Reviewers can just check that out without getting lost in the older files. So why is this so important? If your documents aren't linked properly or poorly named, it can confuse the reviewers and delay your approval. And trust me, no one wants that. So next time when you are preparing an ECTD, think like you are a regulator. Keep it clear, well organized and easy to follow. So what are the recent developments and updates in ECTD? ECTD isn't just a standard, it's an evolving technology and big changes are happening right now. Let's start with ECTD 4.0. This is the latest version designed to enhance lifecycle tracking and structured product labeling. Regulators now have better control over submission changes, making approvals faster and more transparent. But that's not all. Artificial intelligence is transforming ECTD. AI-driven validation tools automatically detect formatting errors before submission. Imagine submitting a dossier and getting instant feedback on missing metadata or incorrect lifecycle operators. And here's a game changer. Emerging markets like China, India, and the Middle East are shifting towards ECTD compliance. If your company is planning submission in these regions, you must follow stricter ECTD guidelines to avoid rejection. If you are working with ECTD, you need to stay ahead of these changes. Adapting to ECTD 4.0, AI-driven automation, and expanding compliance rules will make your submission faster, smoother, and fully compliant. So now let's see what is the future of ECTD and what's next. The future of ECTD isn't just about submitting documents, it's about intelligent, automated and AI driven submission. By 2030, at least half of the pharma submissions will be fully automated. Imagine a world where AI formats your documents, assigns metadata and even predicts the validation errors before submission. One of the biggest changes, e-labeling and structured content management. Instead of static PDFs, regulators will require structured real-time updates for product labels and regulatory information. This means faster updates, fewer compliance issues, and a single source of truth across global agencies. And here's where AI takes things to the next level. AI-powered tools will eliminate the manual validation, instantly checking lifecycle operators, metadata, and hyperlinks. Regulatory agencies will use AI-driven analytics to review dossiers, in record time. So what does this mean for your industry? It is time to embrace automation, AI and structured content because the future of ECTD is smarter than ever. Hope you learned some new information from this video. Comment the topics that you'd like to know more in detail and I will make a separate video that has more likes. Encourage us by hitting the like button and share this video to your friends and family. Most importantly, subscribe and hit the bell button to receive notifications from our channel. Thank you for watching and see you in another video.